And now I want to talk about actually like how you physically clear the energetic space around you. You know, um, there are a lot of different methods and there are a lot of different ways that people feel guided to do it. Some of it's ceremonial. Um, some of it is uh, um, consistent, like a lot of people do it um, on a full moon and a new moon. So they clear the space on a full moon and a new moon. Some people um, clear like all their stones and their crystals on during that time also. Um, I am a little less consistent that way and I'm more um, consistent energetically, meaning I tune into how my energy feels and how the energy of the space feels. So if something feels off to me or heavy or dense and I don't have an explanation for that, then I clear the space. Um, and I'm going to share with you some of the tools I use and some of the ways that I clear space. And then I'm going to share with you um, someone that's more of an expert in this field uh, that does this consistently daily. And I'm going to share some of the, the techniques that she uses and we'll see if some of them are similar. The first way I clear space is I infuse the space with love. Now, that might sound, I don't know, it's almost like it sounds too simple, but I really feel like that's what keeps the vibration of my space high. Uh, our healing center here, we're in the basement of the healing center, um, but it is a place that people come and they literally like come early just so they can sit in the energy of it. Um, they'll come early to appointments, they'll come early to classes. Some people will just ask me if they can just come by and sit in the space because it has a high vibrational um, energy. I think people feel the love that is infused into the space. Now, it's interesting because what happens in this space, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of fear comes out in this space, a lot of resistance um, moves in this space. And so some people might say, well, but then you've kind of, everybody's dumping all their junk, all their stuff. But the reality of it is that then we infuse that space with that love and it changes the vibration of it. So how do you infuse a space with love? Um, you literally, it's so simple that you wouldn't think it is anything, but you literally be that love. You feel that love. You feel that innate energy of absolute unconditional love. And it's, it's like you send it out into the space. I send it out into the universe, but I, I definitely intentionally send it out into the space with, with, sometimes I use color along with it as part of my visualization. And I send it from my heart out. And a lot of times that's the energy people are feeling. They don't know what they're feeling. And then when they start to try to explain it, that's what they feel. They feel a heart connection. They feel safety. They feel security. They feel um, loved, even though they're in a place that they don't even know anybody sometimes. So the first thing is you need no tools at all. Now, a lot of the things that we use to clear space are tools. Um, one of the things that I'm very aware of in my own experience is I had a past life um, where I, I used a lot of tools in my life and I used a lot of tools in teaching, very similar to what I teach now in a different way, and I had a lot of different tools and my tools were taken from me and, um, and I was beheaded. Um, but I couldn't do my work without my tools. I had, I had a dependency on them, basically. And so in this lifetime, I think one of the reasons that I, I, I like tools, I like all those things, I enjoy the physical scent of, of Nag Champa, let's say, or of Vibrazor, or um, the, the smoky energy of Sage. I don't like the smoke itself, but the energy that it creates. Um, but I'm not dependent on any tools. And I think that's why I resisted them very much in the beginning, because I, I knew that I had lost a life to having those tools and not being able to, to do my work in the way that was necessary, therefore ending my life ending. Um, and so you don't have to have any tools to infuse a space with love. And yes, everybody is capable of it. You all are love innately. It's who you are. Do you know that? Do you know that you have love within you that can heal anything if it's allowed, if it's received. So all you have to do is be love. 
And as you project that energy of love out, it's received if it's allowed. So that's the first thing. There's no tools involved. You can visualize a beautiful, brilliant energy, a white light, a pink light. I always call in Shamuel, um, and then I call in Michael. Uh, I always ask Michael to surround me and protect me so I don't absorb any of the energy that might be in this space. Um, and so Michael's always by my side in the beginning of the day, but I also, once the space is clear and I can feel that vibration, then I ask Michael to surround the space and, and, and keep the space maintained at the highest vibration that's possible. Um, so that's the first thing I do. To me, that's the most important one. And it's so simple and so natural. And I think most of us tend to do things that, that are um, seemingly, there's, there's a physical experience of it so that we believe that it's happened. Well, to me, love is the most important thing I could ever share. And, and it moves mountains and energies. You know, this healing center um, that, I, that we have for those of you that have been here, some of you haven't been here, but for those of you that have been here, um, the way I attained the healing center was actually through tragedy. Um, uh, uh, the man who lived here um, was stabbed 39 times in this space. And not once ever has anybody ever, and I've been here for eight years, nobody has ever felt that, almost nine years, felt that, known that, that you can't even feel that energy in this space because there's so much love. And so, and then he didn't die, by the way. He lived through that. Um, but it, it's, it's not about what's happened in the space. It's what we do with it. Okay? It's what we do with it. So one of the other tools I like to use, um, one of my favorites is I use Vibrazor, and obviously many of you um, have bought this, used it. It's um, If you just spray it, um, it's sage and orange, and orange is to raise the vibration, sage is to clear the space. Um, what I like about this, um, and any kind of sprays, is that it is um, it, it gives you something physical to do so that you feel like you've done something to clear the space. So it causes, there's an action, a physical human action that then allows a certain feeling. And for some of us, um, and for some of you, we need the physical experience in order to believe that it's real. Um, so for a lot of people, it's the scent, and that brings them to the place of feeling grounded and centered and the space feeling clear and their vibration raising. For some people, it's literally the mist that kind of hits their skin. So it, it's, it, it, it's something that they have an experience with. Instead of just booming out love, they have an experience that says, okay, now the space is clear. Um, I use oils in my life every day. Um, and so I, I created this because for me, um, some of the sage sprays were a little bit strong and I like the vibration of this specific combination, the way that we've created it. So this is one of the things I use. You could use Aura Cleanser. I carry it. Clifton's one of my friends. He's got a great product. Uh, so you could use Aura Cleanser, and it has a variety of different oils, many more than this. This is pretty simple. Um, and gem elixirs, all kinds of things. He does all kinds of stuff. He has a great line of stuff. Um, uh, you can use just a, a spray, a, a, a space clear spray of any kind. Um, this is just mine. Um, the other thing that you can use is Nag Champa. So Nag Champa is an incense and it's just very simple. And what it does is it raises the vibration. There's, a, there's an energy to it that takes people to a place of, again, feeling that groundedness, that connectedness, that safety and security, that clears the energy or energies or entities even that um, are there. So this is another tool, and if, you, if you're just kind of maintaining energy, like there hasn't been anything major happening, then something light like this would likely work for you. You know, sometimes we need the big old dump, like we need the really big, like call in all the forces kind of thing. That might be using sage and using and burning. Um, but for, for kind of in between sessions or just clearing your own space without anything major happening, then incense or, or a spray would, would probably work for you. Um, the next thing that you would use is sage. Um, this is white sage, and it is um, 
uh, um, a very mild, this one's really a mild scent, but it brings in a lot of smoke. So for people who have sensitivities to smoke, then sage for a lot of people is a non-negotiable like a no way. Um, but if you were going to use sage, what you do is you would burn it, just like the Nag Champa. Um, you would burn it, and as you burn it, and you allow that smoke to fill the space, um, for me, I always say a prayer as I do it. I call in Archangel Michael specifically and ask for that space to be clear for the highest good of all that are involved in this space. Um, but as you burn it, you, you, what I do is I fill up the space. So I walk from, um, when I enter the house, I walk to the right and I walk all the way around the entire premises inside the house and then the entire premises outside the house with the sage burning as I'm infusing it with love and um, asking Michael to clear any energy that's not for the highest good. And then once I've done it and completed my circle, I have a thing about circles. When I've completed my circle, then I open all the space to let that energy move out. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. My way is not the right way, it's just a way. Um, so that's one of the things that you can do with sage. Um, some people ring a bell or beat a pan or I have a, upstairs I have a great big gong. And the gong, woo, you can feel the vibration just ripple through the space. That moves energy. So here's your bell. Here's a bell. And I have this too. And you can feel the vibration in the space. Like you can feel it. I can feel it right now in my heart. Maybe you can too, even from where you're sitting. Because energy is just energy. It's a, it, it's not, it doesn't matter about distance. So you can use something of sound. A gong, a bell, a, a, um, a, a brass bowl, a crystal bowl, anything like that can shift the energy. And a lot of times, if I feel Gaia too, once I've cleared space, um, I may hit the, hit, hit the gong or ring a bell at the end of that process. A couple of times when it's been really, really dense energy, like I've cleared space in a lot of different ways where um, people have died or where there's been a lot of fighting or, or obviously stabbings. Um, uh, my dear friend committed suicide and um, my husband and I went and we cleared the space. I cleared the space energetically um, and, and, and then I helped him and he and I together cleaned the space um, from, from him, from his suicide. And it was one of the most sacred experiences because you could feel, literally, literally feel that energy change as we infuse that space with love. So that's the bell. You can do what's called a green fire. A green fire I actually was taught by Sonia Choquette many years ago. It's not one I do all the time, but when there's really heavy, dense energy, like in the case of my friend who committed suicide, um, we used a green fire. And a green fire is, is simply a little bit of Epsom salt on the bottom of a um, very heavy pan a little bit of Epsom salt. You can even put um, tin foil or something in the bottom um, if you want to not hurt the pan. And then you put a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just enough to make the Epsom salt wet. And then you put it in, in, in um, a bathtub or in a sink. You just put a little bit because what happens is you light it and the flames pop out. And so if you've got it in the sink, there's not much room for it to go before it hits the ceiling, right? So my request usually, what I usually do or tell people is to do it in a bathtub. Can't be responsible for, for how big your fire goes because depending on the energy of the space and how much density there is there and how much rubbing alcohol and Epsom salt you put in there, um, you can have a big old fire and you don't want a big old fire so you want it to be smaller. So just barely enough Epsom salt, barely enough alcohol and then the fire really starts to really transmute that energy. It's, it's amazing to watch. And the reason they call it green fire is the fire generally, not for everyone, but most of the time, um, instead of it being kind of the orangish red, it's really green. There's lots of green tips and things throughout it. The other thing that you can do, or that, that uh, I'll do, um, and I said, um, uh, I call it Archangel Michael, um, but one of the things I want to share with you is in this book, um, 365 Days of Angel Prayers, which is a new book that just came out, I'm a, a co-author of it, there are so many prayers in this particular book that can help you to infuse that energy into clear space. Like I just turned, the page I just turned to is Spring Cleaning. And it's clearing the energy 
um, with Archangel Uriel. So, so, so praying for those of you that are um, people who tend to feel more connected um, to spirit in prayer, that's something you can do to clear space very easily. Okay, so those are some of the techniques that I use and some of the um, tools that I like uh, to use. Now, I'm going to share with you um, a couple of the, well, actually, I'm going to share with you, uh, I have a, a client, colleague, um, that is a dowser. Um, her name is Jody Harvala, and she's probably online. I don't know if she is, but if she is, say hi, Jody. And um, she's a dowser, so she lives up in North Dakota, which doesn't really matter. Remember, I said energy is energy, so you can you can you can clear energy. I've done at house clearings for people on the East Coast. I don't have to be in the space to infuse love and direct it to that place. So you can have house clearings done um, and 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 clear energy without being in the space. Um, so you wouldn't have the same physical experience, which is what a lot of people like, and they like to see how it's done, they like to be a part of it and feel it, um, but for people that get really, um, they're really struggling, I've had a lot of people that lose someone and they die in their home and they freaked out, and so we can go in and clear that space, it's very simple, it's very, very easy. Um, so these are her um, six, I think it's six, seven, seven um, ways to clear space. Uh, the first one is smudging, which is using the sage, Native American custom, and um, it's releasing any negativity. And obviously you would use the smudge stick, you'd need a lighter, and then a feather or something to kind of fan it. Uh, and then usually I like to use something natural, so I use an abalone shell to catch any of the ash that falls down so it doesn't burn your carpet or your couch or anything that you're saging over. Um, so really and, and and she's really she's talking about the same thing that i would suggest which is setting an intention that i want to clear the space and um and also you could be calling in the angels or calling in michael to help you to clear it and 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 keep it maintained to maintain that energy number two she says ring out the bad juju uh, she learned this from a feng shui expert uh when i had a house full of spirits we live across from a church and occasionally our home is a bit of a magnet for that energy so when we first move in, I saw a, ga a ghost sitting on one of our rocking chairs. So use a very loud bell. So same idea, using the bell. Open everything, drawers, doors, windows, closets, stove, fridge, freezer. If it can be opened, open it. Take the loud bell and starting in the center of your home, ring that bell as loud as you can and let that resonate kind of through the house. And then if you've got other floors, like starting on the main floor, working your way up or down the house, leaving all of the doors, doors open so that that energy can move out. Um, she says, apologize to your pets and neighbors afterwards. Um, moving that energy out, the sound of vibration of the bell. So we're on the same page there. Uh, number three, vacuum or sweep. Uh, it's interesting because sweeping is something that, um, that in, in um, the Asian culture, um, people sweep all of the bad energy out right before New Year, which we just had um, on February 19th. So last week was Chinese New Year. And so what they do is they sweep all of the bad energy out New Year's Eve. And then you're not allowed to sweep for the next day and a half. So you don't sweep it all on New Year's Day. So you don't sweep the good energy away too. So, um, so sweeping or vacuuming um, is one of the ways that you can clear that blocking energy. Number four, get your boogie on and open those windows. Music, changing the vibration through music, raises the vibration. Move your body along with it. We'll start to move this and clear the space that's going on inside of here. Um, say a prayer, and she has Archangel Michael. Um, entering your home and say a prayer. I invoke the blue light of Archangel Michael to surround me and protect me. Um, I haven't read this yet, so it's so funny because we're all along on the same ideas here. Um, Number six, crystals and or stones. This isn't one that I mentioned, but it's absolutely one that I use also. Um, I use a lot of selenite, and I have selenite all over my classroom, all over my house. Um, put it outside when I feel guided. I don't do it every full moon or every new moon, but when I feel guided, I put it outside or I put it in salt water to clear those stones. Um, crystals offer amazing energy that comes from the earth um, for the earth. So selenite is one of her favorites. And... Um, 
And so that's what she uses to, to clear energy, dispel anger, frustration, promotes compassion, and enhances meditation. Um, for those of you that have been to the classroom, I have a huge selenite lamp, like this big, um, in my healing center. And then I have selenite lamps about this size that I sell in the healing center that are just, um, they just change the energy. I have them in my own office, um, my office where I see clients and my office where I do my office work. I have selenite lamps as well to keep that energy um, dissipating and moving. Energy is so important and we don't think about it until we can't find any other reason why things are stuck. And oftentimes it's after we've tried everything else and it's so simple to keep the energy moving. Um, number seven, have your house professionally cleared or doused. Um, the ideas, the first ideas are absolutely ones that you can do on your own. But if you feel like you're getting stuck, if you feel like I don't know what I'm doing, like I have a lot of people that'll call me and say, do you do house clearings? And I don't do them anymore just because of my schedule. So I refer those to um, my assistants who um, I've trained to do house clearings. But um, I'll tell them, you know, you can do it yourself. It's the, here's the tools. It's really easy. You can come and get the sage at the healing center. You can, I'll walk you through how to do it. But they don't feel like they can, whether that's because of fear, whether it's because they don't feel qualified, whether it's because they're not seeing energies in the same way, or even because they just don't, they don't believe it, but they want to try it. Um, which has happened several times with me with realtors. Um, and so a lot of times people don't feel like they can do it. And so if they don't feel like they can do it, that's okay. Then certainly um, you can hire someone that can do it. A dowser um, can come in and clear the space for you and, and probably give you some insight also into what's going on that you might not even be aware of because they're an outside person coming in and can feel the energy. Same with a feng shui expert. You can have a feng shui expert come in and, and give you some ideas for how you could help the, the physical energy by, by placing some feng shui cures or um, moving the energy in a different way. So, and if you're interested in that, um, Jody is a great dowser. That's one of the reasons why I asked her if she had a little um, outline. Um, but if you're interested in her, her um, information, she's online right now if you're live. And if you're watching this recorded, um, then you can go to Jody Harvala, H A R V A L A dot com, J O D I E H A R V A L A dot com, um, to get more information about dowsing. It's really a fascinating um, um, process to watch. Uh, and, and feng shui experts, there's a lot of them depending on your, in your community. Um, we have uh, Sandy Sue here in Arizona and we also have um, Lisa, I can't remember her last name. Um, we have Lisa though, and she's great too. So whatever you feel guided to, but the thing is, is don't just pass it off as it's nothing because it is something. And for me, if you don't ever let it get too overwhelming, then it's much easier. So just keep you know, just pick a drawer, just pick a closet section, not the whole closet, just this section, this time, this section, this time, this section, this time, a little cubby. Break it down. It makes it a lot easier for you. Um, Jody's going to be having a, um, an online clearing class coming up in April. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about it, then you can learn a lot about it um, through that online program. So shoot her an email and let her know you might be interested if you feel guided to. Um, I can't say enough about space clearing because it's so not the first thing think people think about. It's usually like the last thing. Kind of like, you know, I, I, I work as a psychic investigator and, um, and, and with, a, with a group, and I was actually working a case today, and, you know, we're always the last ones. Like, okay, nothing else has worked, and so now we'll come and ask you for help. Um, and, and it's kind of the same thing with, with your house clearing. It's like, okay, I've done this and I've done that and I've done the other and nothing's working. So now what is it? And then we look a little bit deeper at what might be going on energetically here. Um, what's going on emotionally here? What energies do we need to release? What energies do we need to move through? What energies do we need to heal? And so I encourage you to look around from a different space. And if you can't see it, then ask someone who can. If you can't see what's happening, but you feel it and you're not just not quite sure, then ask someone who can.